Once again, my cup just runneth over, folks. I um, mean, I can just easily say amen right now. Let's go to the house. Amen. I am, I mean, my cup is just running over, man. I thank y'all so much for that beautiful, beautiful song service. How awesome it is to be able to glorify the Lord through song. I'm going to invite you to turn your Bibles to 1 John chapter 2. We covered uh, chapter 1. Last week, we're going to look at chapter 2, the first couple of verses this morning. And I pray that as this song service is done, that it just brings great joy to your heart this morning. For the Lord has done for us. Amen. My little children, these things write I unto you that ye sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. And he is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Let's pray together. Our Heavenly Father, we are so grateful to open this word this morning in our free country. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to study together, to draw closer to thee together. And Father, we thank you for your promise that when we draw near to you, you would draw nigh to us. So Father, we look forward to that today, just being in your presence and at your feet. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We all together last week, we learned that the purpose of this epistle is the abundant life. Yes, Jesus wants us to experience life to the full. We talked about full fellowship with God and his family. And then we talked about the fullness of joy flowing from the assurance of salvation. I pray you have that assurance this morning. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Can you say that today? Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Probably my favorite hymn of all time. Blessed assurance. I pray you have that this morning. And it brings you fullness of joy. And listen, he wants us to, to have full forgiveness of sin as well in our daily life. And he said that we can through what church? What did he say last week? Through confession of sin. Amen? If we'll just confess it to him. He said he's just and faithful to forgive us of that sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. It is a beautiful gift. The gift of confession that God has given us. And, and so here God, God is... He's addressing the problem of sin in the lives of believers. And we learned last week, uh, if you'll remember there in chapter 1, that sin destroys fellowship, right? I didn't say that sin destroys relationship, but sin destroys fellowship with God. Let me put it to you this way. If, if one of my children were to go out and to mess up really bad or, or they just started, you know, just living a lifestyle of sin, I as their father have every right to say, look, until you get that right, you're not welcome here in this house. And I withdraw fellowship from, from that child because guess what? I'm not inviting the devil in my house. I have a, I have a, a, a right to protect my household and my family from that. So I can withdraw fellowship. But guess what? She's my daughter, is she? My blood is still running through her veins. You know, I, I, I can't do anything about that. The same is true with our Father, our Heavenly Father. He can say, look, until you get that right, until you confess that sin, 
I'm not going to answer your prayers. We're not going to have fellowship together. But if you'll come jump in my lap and confess that, in other words, call it what we said last week, call it what he calls it, see it, and do that with a contrite, sorrowful heart, he said, man, I'm just and faithful to forgive you of that sin and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. And he restores that fellowship. It's just like David when he sinned with Bathsheba and in Psalms 51 when he began to confess that to the Lord. He said, Lord, restore unto me the joy of my salvation. Create in me a clean heart. See, he didn't lose his salvation, but he lost the joy of his salvation. Amen. Because that fellowship was hindered. And the Bible says he came to the Lord with a contrite heart. So yes, sin can destroy our fellowship. Also, sin will make us ashamed at Christ's coming. We learn that from here in 1 John chapter 2. If you look at verse 28 and what it says there, And now, little children, abide in him, that when he shall appear, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. So when Jesus comes again, I mean, we don't want to be in the position where we're like, Oh, no, it's him. No, we want to be in the position where we're like, oh man, it's him finally. And we stand before him in confidence, not ashamed, because he came at a moment when we had sin in our lives. So sin will make us ashamed, according to that passage at Christ's coming. And also, sin may bring physical death. Do you realize that this morning? Sin may bring physical death. If you look in 1 John chapter 5, verse 16, here's what it says. If any man see his brother sin a sin which is not unto death, he shall ask and he shall give him life for them that sin not unto death. There is a sin unto death. I did not say that he shall pray for it. Wow. That's pretty serious, isn't it? God wants us to pray for our brothers when sin comes into their life. But he says, there is a sin unto death. And I should say that you shouldn't pray for it. For the unbeliever, you see, you have the unpardonable sin the Bible describes. You know what that is, right? Simply blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. Denying the Holy Spirit's work, maybe attributing it to Satan. When the Holy Spirit does something, oh, that's not God. When, when God, the Holy Spirit, moves in your life and you deny that it's the Holy Spirit calling you and moving in your life, God says that's an unpardonable sin. Every other sin can be forgiven. Praise God. Amen. So in other words, the only thing that will send anybody to hell that's unpardonable is what? Denying Jesus Christ. Denying the Holy Spirit of God, denying Jesus Christ. That's the only way. So I, you've heard me say this before. God doesn't send anybody to hell, but he sure he respects your choice to go there and allows you to make that choice. Because that's the only way you can go. It's by committing the unpardonable sin. Everything else is forgivable by receiving Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. So, Brother Jeff, what is the sin unto death? There's a lot of opinions about that. I'm going to tell you what's settled in my spirit by the Holy Spirit. What I truly believe he's talking about here. There is a sin unto death, and I believe, and, and it's for the Christian. Okay? And I believe he's talking about physical death here, not spiritual death, because first of all, the brother's already made alive, right, spiritually. So why is there death if he's already been made alive in his spirit spiritually? I believe he's referring to physical death here. And here's what I believe it is. I believe there are some people that can go so far in sin without turning back. They're a believer. 
But God finally says, look, that's enough. You're not doing me any good on earth anymore. As a matter of fact, you're hurting the kingdom of God's witness. I'm going to bring you home now and take you out. Lord says, I should say, you don't pray for that. And I believe really what he's saying there, it's not going to do you any good to pray for that. I think we need to pray for all brothers and sisters in sin. And I think God's word supports that. But he said, look, if they've gone that far, you know, if they've gone that far, there's no turning back. And he said, I'm just going to bring them home. It's not doing the kingdom any good. I pray you never have to experience that. I pray none of our loved ones ever have to experience that. But according to the word of God, it does exist. The sin unto this. So sin will, will not only destroy fellowship, it will not only make us ashamed of Christ's coming, but sin may bring physical death into our lives as well. So, listen, we just need to thank God today for his provision. Amen? Amen? Jesus Christ, his finished work on the cross of Calvary for forgiveness of sins. So I want us this morning to take some time and let's just look at God's provision for daily victory in our life. And to do that, let's first consider the aim of the Christian life. In verse 1, it says there that you sin not. Wow. His aim is that you sin not. That is the goal or aim for our life. Now, that brings about another question. Because I know what some of you are thinking. That, that's just impossible, right? Well, let me ask you this. Do you think God would ever tell you to do something that you couldn't do? And he knew you couldn't do? I don't think he would ever ask us to do something that was not possible. I'm not saying it's easy. But I do believe it's possible. I believe that somebody could wake up in the morning, thank the good Lord for another day, sit down, enjoy a wonderful breakfast, take care of his body, get up, go to work, have a wonderful day at work with a smile on his face. You know, encourage the people around him. Maybe even have an opportunity somewhere throughout the day to witness to somebody, come back home, have a great meal with their family, enjoy some family time, just with, you know, just enjoy the day. Go to bed, lay your head down. Lord, thank you for a wonderful day. Does that sound possible? Sure it is. And guess what? You made it through a day without sin. So his goal for our life is that we sin not. Well, awareness of sin is what brings us to the Savior, or it should, amen? And what I'm saying this morning, if you want to be saved, you've got to acknowledge that you're lost. If you want to go to heaven, you've got to realize that you are bound for hell. In, in evangelism, I mean, you have to, you literally have to get people lost before you can get them saved. Now, we can't save anybody. We know that. But what I'm saying, you've got to get them to realize that they're lost in their sin before they'll ever see the Savior, right? It just makes sense. Before you could ever lead them to the cross and to Jesus, they've got to know that without Jesus, they're lost in their sin. And you see, Christ came to save sinners, right? That's, that's what he said, that I've come to seek and to save the lost in Luke chapter 19 and verse 10. And upon receiving Christ by faith, we are Forgiven. I want to remind you of Colossians chapter 1 here. Verse 4. In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sin. The blood of Jesus. We can be 
be forgiven. Another passage says there is no forgiveness without the shedding of blood. Amen. It's only through his Christ, that through Christ's blood that we can be forgiven. And listen, look, I mean, that should be our goal as believers. We should aim for daily victory. That's God's aim for us. So we should line our will up with His will. We, we should walk in the Spirit and not in the flesh. Or as chapter 1 told us last week, we should choose to walk in the light and not in the darkness. And, and listen, Jesus is our example, right? That's God's total aim for us, is for us to become like His Son, Jesus Christ to grow and become more like him each and every day. And listen, folks, we are equipped to win. We are. I mean, think about it. Jesus. <clears throat> Jesus on the cross, forgiveness of sins, eternal life because he's risen from the grave. We too shall be risen. But then there's the Holy Spirit who lives inside of us. We're equipped to win. Y'all, the Holy Spirit walks and talks with us. He leads, guides, and directs us along the way. He, he's here to teach us. He's here to comfort us. He's here to help us along the way. I mean, what else could you ask for? Oh, by the way, confession, right? That other gift that we don't have to remain in sin. We can confess it. And it'd be washed away, never to remember it anymore. What else could we ask for? Well, now let's consider the advocate for all Christians. In verse 1, it says, too, But if any man sins. I don't know about you, but I'm glad Jesus added that. <laughs> But if any man sin, so here we are facing the reality of imperfection. But you know what? God loves us still. Look at Romans chapter 8. For I'm persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor death, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. If any man sins, he still loves us. So much. I mean, listen, we have an advocate with the Father, the scripture says. An advocate who comes to our aid when we stumble. An advocate who intercedes in heaven for us. When Satan goes to and fro accusing the brethren, Jesus is saying that, yeah, he messed up, Father, but guess what? He's one of mine. He's washed in the blood. He's saved. Thank God today. That is beautiful, folks. Again, what love he has for his children. Church, I'm just trying to say this morning, Jesus is on your side. So he's an advocate on earth and, and, and there's one in heaven for us. And you can go back to the Gospel of John and read through chapters 14 through 16 and, and just he just reiterates all this that he's fixing to go back to the Father but he's sending another to be with us here, to be an advocate for here. But guess what? I'm going to be sitting at the right, home, the right hand of the Father Almighty to make intercession for you each and every Jesus in heaven and the Holy Spirit on earth to lead us, to guide us, to direct us along the way. And so we have an advocate when the enemy comes against us. What a God we serve this morning. Amen. 
Now considering God's provision again, let's consider next the atonement. The atonement. The Bible says in verse 2 that he is the propitiation for our sin. In other words, he has paid for our sins with his own blood. Church, that's just a big old Bible word, that word propitiation. It simply means what Jesus did on the cross of Calvary satisfied God for the penalty of the punishment of sin. Only what Jesus did on the cross is what satisfied God. And Jesus himself said, it is finished, right? He has paid the price in full. There's nothing that anything or anybody or anyone else could ever do to satisfy that penalty. Only what Jesus did on the cross. And that's why Jesus had every right to claim, I'm the way, the life. I'm the truth. Anyone who comes to the Father only is going to come through me. Amen? He is the way, the truth, and the life. It's the only way it's going to happen. And God reinforced that in the Old Testament when he said that our righteousness is like filthy rags to him. He's basically saying there's nothing you can do. You can never be good enough. Billy Graham can never be good enough to satisfy God's penalty of sin. Only what Jesus did satisfied. And so Christ has reconciled us to our Father in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. We're reminded of that here. 2 Corinthians 5. Uh, wherefore he is able. Uh, come on back. There you go. Keep going. There it is. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away, and behold, all things are become new. And all things are of God who hath reconciled us to himself by who? Jesus Christ. By Jesus Christ. And hath given us the ministry of reconciliation. To wit that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself. Not imputing their trespasses unto them. And hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. That's just the gospel. He's committed that unto us to go share it with other people. To go share the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. Claim it. Accept it. Receive God's grace and be reconciled back to God. And it's all done through the finished work of the cross. But remember, his work as our advocate continues today. Again, he's at the right hand of God the Father Almighty, still today serving you and me, interceding with you and I. Again, what a great God we serve. Friends, I just want to encourage you in light of all this, you know what we ought to be. We ought to be inviting others to the abundant life that we get to enjoy. Will you do that? Will you do that for Jesus? So, so let's end this morning. Let's, let's end this morning with the call for consistent Christian living. That you sin not. But know if something happens and you do fall, we have an advocate. Amen. In heaven. We don't have to live in that sin. We can be forgiven of that sin and continue to live in victory in our daily walk. So let's do that. Let's do that, first of all, in view of his atonement. We should do that in view of his atonement. And not only that, we can do that. Second, let's do it in view of his continuing work as our advocate. Again, we should do that. And we can do that. 
So let's do it. Amen? Let's do it to show our love to Him. Because He first loved us in such a way. Would you pray with me? Oh, Heavenly Father, we thank You so much for giving Your Son, Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you not only for his work on the cross that offers forgiveness of sins, but Father, we thank you that he chooses to serve as our advocate even today. And Father, through his atonement, that is possible. So Father, let us not choose to continue in sin once we fall short us to choose to come before you and just jump in your lap, God. Call it what it is, confess it to you, and enjoy that forgiveness to the full. Enjoy life to the full and continue to enjoy fellowship to the full. We thank you that he loved us in such a way that he loved us first. And Father, I just pray today, if there's anyone who has not received that grace in their life, they haven't received the grace that God the Father offered His Son, Jesus Christ, that today they will be willing to submit to Him, call upon Him as Lord and Savior, and let Him change their life. Let, let Him make them a new creature in Christ Jesus where the old things are passed away and all things in life become new. And they begin to serve you and they begin to see this world in a different light. Father, instead of the world view, they begin to see and have a godly world view. So Father, I thank you for those great songs today. God, that through it all, we can look to heaven knowing that this is not our home. And we can look forward to it. We can look forward to Jesus' coming again and not be ashamed because we've chosen to walk in the light and not in the flesh. Father, thank you. We're so grateful. In Jesus' name we pray.